Hello everyone, this is Matt Ferret, and welcome to another episode of The Matt Ferret Show, where I interview insiders and experts to help light a path to a successful retirement. If you're listening to this podcast, put a face with a voice. Don't forget you can actually watch The Matt Ferret Show on themattferretshow.com and on YouTube. When was the last time you talked to your pharmacist? And I mean really, really talked to them. If you're anything like me, my interactions thus far in life with pharmacists have been limited to something along the lines of, do you have any questions? And then I mutter, no. My guest today is Brian Kiefer. Brian is a pharmacist, but he's more than just a pharmacist. He's an independent pharmacist. And even more, he owns three independent pharmacies in rural Missouri, one of which was established in 1871. Another is the only pharmacy in the entire county. He also sits on the board of the Missouri Pharmacy Association. That gives him, and fortunately us, a very unique insider's perspective into not only the ever-changing role of pharmacists and pharmacies, but also of the independent pharmacy and the role independent pharmacists play in rural America. We covered a lot of territory, including the challenges of a small business competing against large pharmacy chains, and the differences in patient care, the experience of consuming health care in rural America, and a lot more. We touched on the industry, why his advice is to always use one pharmacy, how to actually talk to and use your pharmacist, and here's a hint, there's a lot more than just ask, do you have any questions? Make sure you listen all the way to the end because we talk about gaps in the system, and spoiler alert, Brian told me his pharmacy catches dangerous prescription mistakes every day, why using cash or drug discount cards instead of insurance might lead to dangerous drug interactions, and the conversation wraps up with some really good advice as to how to actually use your pharmacist, and wraps up with good advice for caregivers or kids trying to help their parents with their medications. Enjoy. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing, Matt? All right, so you're, I'm great, thank you. So I was already ready to get, get into my question. I was jumping the gun. Brian, I'm well, thank you for asking. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so you're a pharmacist, but you know, uh, you're a behind the counter pharmacist, but you're also a, a, a small independent pharmacy owner. That's correct, right? That is, that is right. We have three of them. And you're uh, a rural small pharmacy owner, which makes you non-chain and, and pretty unique, right? Yes, it does. Yeah, we're, we got three pharmacies. One is the only pharmacy in the county in Southeast Missouri. There's not another pharmacy for 30 to 40 minutes away. You own pharmacies, plural, but you also, you're behind the counter every day, right? Yeah, I'm working behind the counter and filling prescriptions and talking to patients yeah, I'm behind so the This is like not a, this is not corporate, you know, big box, whatever you want to call it, pharmacy. This is like true, like small business, mom and pop pharmacy in rural America. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We've got people coming in and asking us to do everything for them. And, and, you know, we will, if they want us to, we'll take their blood pressure. We'll take their blood sugars. We'll sit down and have a conversation with them. We can uh, help them look at their insurance plans. We can do all kinds of stuff with them. So whenever I'm uh, just personally speaking, yeah. it, it, you know, when I go get a pharmacy filled, I, I go to the drive through and I, or I walk up and I don't even know who hands me my pills. And sometimes I think it's the pharmacist that walks up to me and goes, do you have any questions? And I go, I don't think so. And they're like, okay, good. I mean, if I've ever talked to a pharmacist for more than 20 seconds in my entire life, I'd be surprised. How do, how do you, and more importantly, maybe independent pharmacies or even rural pharmacies, how, how is my experience different than what your customers get? Well, I, only one of our stores has drive throughs for a certain reason. Uh, we, we think it's a little impersonal. I know it's convenient, but uh, we like the, the patients to come in. We like, them, we like to talk to them. They know us, we know them. We, it just a, a, I think it's just a different kind of experience. So what kind of experience is it then? So is it rural versus city versus suburbs? Or is this really, you know, small business independent pharmacy versus someone who's just, you know, chucking pills across the counter? Uh, people enjoy coming in. People enjoy us taking care of them. People, uh, a lot of them don't even want their meds synced together because they want to make sure they come in once or twice a week, be able to talk to us. Some people, some of the older people, it's part of their day. 
some people come in and just sit down and have coffee. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. So it's kind of a community gathering place. It some, yeah, sometimes it is. Yeah. It's kind of, it, it's actually kind of entertaining sometimes. That's not uh, the experience I think most people get at a pharmacy counter or at a, at a pharmacy. No, I think the big chains, they've got a lot of metrics to meet and they don't have time to do a lot of things. They might fill more scripts. I don't know, but uh, I, I think in the rural communities and even some of the bigger ones, I think the mom and pop independent pharmacies are just more personable is um talk about independent pharmacies just for a second uh and i don't you know i don't need to well you know i don't think either one of us want to do us versus them or them versus us kind of thing but um i think about back to business and you've got uh, independent bookstores i'm gonna draw some parallels they might be wrong independent bookstores and then you had barnes and noble then you had amazon taking over the world and then you had you know uh you know mom and pop hardware stores then ace hardware then lowe's and then home depot so it kind of seems to me from, you know, outside of the pharmacy industry, that's kind of what has happened. Um, is that true or are independent pharmacies still going strong? Um, and, you know, what's kind of the, the landscape out there? I think independent pharmacies are, are still going strong. I, I think people come in for the personable, the personal experience. Uh, people like to be recognized. People like to know your name. Um, me personally, I'd rather go to a mom and pop or an Ace Hardware, because we know the people that own Ace Hardware, they come see us. I'd rather go there than go to Lowe's. Um, that, that's not to put down other people. I got two friends that are the managers of the local Walmarts, pharmacies, and uh, we hang out. I mean, they're good guys and they, I mean, they're good pharmacists. I just think that the, uh, Coming into the mom and pop store is just a, a different experience that I think more people like. We've heard so much about, at least I've heard so much about mm-hmm. the closing of hospitals around rural America. And I think COVID really sped that up uh, yeah. because it couldn't handle the patient volume or they were transferring people out. But even before COVID, you kept hearing or I kept hearing in the news, you know, rural hospitals and rural providers were becoming more and more scarce. And you're in. I think what I would call rural America. You said one of your pharmacies is, is, is in like the only one in the entire county. Talk yes. to me a little about bit about the challenges of providing healthcare and uh, in rural counties and rural America. Uh, you still have to give personal service, just like if there was a competition right across the street. Uh, I don't think you should ever let your guard down on that. Always treat your customers right. Treat them like family. Um, Really, the biggest challenges we have are maybe in the wintertime when it snows or ices and we can't get deliveries um, of our uh, deliveries of our medication in. Um, sometimes when it's really bad out, it's kind of nice that the local police and sheriff's departments will actually come and deliver our medicines to the patients if they can't get out. I mean, that's something you really don't see in the city. I mean, it's pretty nice. <laughs> you know, they're just everybody just helps each other out. It's it's uh, it's a good experience. It's a good it's a good community. Is it is it more difficult? You mentioned you know weather hazards, obviously, but is it more difficult to get people to come in in rural counties to to you know maintenance medications to keep up with their scripts? Uh, are there pricing not pricing but cost challenges that you have to deal with more in in, in more rural areas? There is uh, a lot of companies. Um, if their insurance mandates them to go to a big chain, they can only get a few fills filled at our pharmacy. And then they're mandated to drive 30, 40 miles or 30, 30, 40 minutes one way uh, just to get the prescription filled when, you know, we can do it right there, but uh, their insurance won't allow it. Some people will opt to pay cash if it's not that expensive. And, um, you know, we try to give them a good price. Brian, so how come I mean, I get pharmacy networks because I, I have insurance and I have to use certain doctors and certain hospitals and certain pharmacies. So tell me on the pharmacy side of things, why is it that, you know, the big box chains are usually in or some of them are in and not necessarily all the independent pharmacies like yours are in network? A lot of the big chain pharmacies are owned by the insurance company. They also own the uh, pharmacy benefit managers. So they're all vertically integrated. So they pay themselves more 
So they want the prescriptions and they mandate that those patients go to the big chains. So if there's not a big chain around, they'll have to come to our place, one of our pharmacies, and they'll either have to pay a higher copay or they'll get one fill at a copay and then they're mandated to go to mail order or drive that distance in order to get their preferred copay. So if I live close to your independent pharmacy and the next closest in-network pharmacy is a 30 or 40 minute drive away, what can I do to call my insurance company and say like, look, man, I, I want to go to this pharmacy. It's five minutes from my house. I don't want to drive 40 minutes. Is there a process I, the consumer, or can do? Sometimes they'll have a, an, they'll provide a number on the uh, rejection that we can get and the patient can opt out. Uh, that's happening less and less now. So sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's if you want your insulin, you need to go drive 40 miles one way to go get it because they won't cover it at our pharmacy. Or you can use mail order and then it gets shipped in the mail. And if it's freezing, it could freeze. It may get inactive or in, you know, if it's 100 degrees outside and it sits in your mailbox all day or on your front porch. You know, same thing. You got these temperature excursions that the medications are being subject to. And, you know, just look at the, the COVID tests that the government are sending out right now. And people are freaking out and they're saying they're not working because of the temperature excursions. And it's like, well, they've been doing that with medicine for years. And we've been complaining about it. But God forbid a COVID test get cold. <laughs> it doesn't work. So... Yeah, it's just kind of a, it's, it's kind of a sad situation because some of these people, you know, people don't believe us, but some of these people don't have transportation. They have a bus that comes around and gets them and takes them to their house and back. And it's, that's what they have. They'll have to rely on another family member or something else to go to the nearest chain store to pick it up. That's, um, I can, like, I'm listening to you going that that's very problematic. If I'm a diabetic with no transportation, or if I have high blood pressure, or if I have, you know, a statin or any type of maintenance medication, uh, and A, I don't get it because of weather, or B, it's it's got temperature, you know, maximums and minimums, that is not a good situation. Do you run into that quite a bit where somebody's got, you know, a box of hot drugs that's been sitting out in 100 degree weather in Southeast Missouri and they're like, uh, is this, can it be used? What do I do with this? You, you, you can't imagine how many times a day that happens. It's insane. It's sad. Yeah, it's like, we, we can perform the same service. We're right here, but they won't let us. The, their insurance companies, the companies they pay for to get service will not let us perform that service. They will not pay us for it. Now on certain statin drugs, certain blood pressure medicines, a lot of them are very inexpensive and they can buy them without too much penalty through us just at a cash price. But, you know, insulin, my God, it's been on the market forever and it's, it's, it's insane. But the problem it's with paying expensive. something for cash price is that your insurance company doesn't know you're filling the script typically, right? So uh, for instance, and I mean, I know Medicare you know, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, if, if people use things like GoodRx or a discount card or, you know, come to your pharmacy and just lay out cash for a prescription, the insurance company doesn't know it. So when you're going through the stages of a Medicare situation, you know, Medicare Part D has four stages and you have to go through, you know, a deductible and a coinsurance, then a gap and then a big old coinsurance. Like if you're paying cash to you and your pharmacy, the insurance company doesn't know you're filling it. So you'd actually don't get credit. You know, if your deductible is $500 yeah. you know, and, and, the, and the drug costs 10 bucks, you pay out of your pocket or use like discount card, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, okay. The insurance company still shows 500 bucks is your deductible, not 490 because they don't know you filled it. Yeah. Also Correct. the insurance company, if they see the doc is telling you to go get the $10 drug, they're going to keep hammering you to go get that prescription filled. Right. So they can keep you healthy. So there's yeah. a whole bunch of problems with this whole, like paying cash insurance, not covering it discount card thing. Is that correct? Yeah. That, that, that is correct. Yeah. 
So I know I already great. asked it again, but I'm going to ask it one more time and maybe yeah. the, the same, but what do I do if I'm living in rural America and I got 30 minute, 40 minute drive and I can't get there? I mean, can I call my insurance company and beg? Do, can you help me? Uh, can, can the pharmacy you, help me? How's this work? You can. There's a girl I know who has a, a child with a, a liver transplant and she can't get her medications filled at her local pharmacy. She has to rely on mail order. And so you got a kid with a transplanted liver relying on meds being sent through the mail. And sometimes she gets them and they're hot. It's just in the summertime, it's sad. And she's, oh my gosh, she's fighting. She's fighting all the time. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but nope, no one can fill them, but her mail order specialty pharmacy. So we've talked about mail order quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling you don't like it. If people want to use it, I'm fine with it. I don't think it should be mandatory if someone wants to come in and use any pharmacy. If they want to use a Walmart pharmacy, if they want to use a local pharmacy, if they want to use a grocery store pharmacy, to me, you should have that right because you're paying for the insurance. But if you're mandated to get it through mail order, I don't see why you, you should have to. And if mail order sends you the wrong thing, which we deal with all the time, or if it's lost or late, that's just another problem. Then we got to fill, that. then we got to try to fill something. And they say, well, it's too soon because then, you know, they've already paid for it through their pharmacies. I didn't even think about that. What a wreck. Oh, that happens at least daily. People come in. It's, it's unbelievable. Are there situations where mail order, I mean, I think you said there, I mean, you alluded to, yeah. Are there situations where, where mail order is, is perfect for people? I mean, I'm thinking like I'm on a, I mean, not to give too much personal information out, but I've been on blood pressure medication for a while. It's probably all the uh, <clears throat> coffee I hammer yeah. down every morning. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, look, if I didn't have to get out of bed and go to the local pharmacy and I just get showed up and, uh, you know, I've been taking and been on blood pressure medication for years. Great. I don't want to have to go to a pharmacy, uh, but that's a pill. I'm guessing those things won't melt at 100 degrees or freeze and become inert at uh, at 20. Well, they still have their excursion. They still have the temperature excursion on the bottle. Not supposed to be above this or below that. You know, it's all on there. I mean, it's probably better than insulin. If it's, you know, a little bit colder or, you know, if it gets frozen, but yeah, it's, and if some people want to do that, I mean, if you're on one medicine and, you know, if you don't need to go into a pharmacy and if that's easier for you, I mean, you have the right to do that. You know, say, I just, you know, send it to me every three months. I'll be fine. But people that want to come in the pharmacy, want to come and talk to a pharmacist, want that personal experience. They should be able to do that. Brian, if, if you could change one thing sitting from where you're sitting, what would it be? I think it would be to get rid of the pharmacy benefit managers that keep everything going to their pharmacies that they own. They say that we can uh, participate in those contracts, but when they pay us, they're paying us literally a buck to fill a prescription when that, you know, when a bottle and a label cost that, you know, we're actually lose money if we participate in some of these contracts. So I know you're a pharmacist and I've been in healthcare mm -hmm. a long time, but I bet most people listening and watching are like, wait, what did he just say? Huh? Did you exactly you right. speak in a foreign language? So break that down for me. So the, the benefit managers, what are those? they, the pharmacy benefit managers, they're the, the middlemen between the payer and the, uh, the patient so the insurance company so you got an insurance, insurance company, company and then mm -hmm. i'm insured and the pharmacy benefit managers are somewhere in the middle of here is that what you're saying yeah they say that they're negotiating drug prices to keep everything low okay so and then they get rebates back on brand name meds so if you're on a brand name medication and it's not covered it's because they're not getting a rebate back on it so you have to uh get to play their game and then it's you know that's why medications require a prior authorization. You have to wait a couple of days for them. If, you know, if the doctors are trying to get around to doing that, it's a, uh, it's a crazy game of pay to play. 
So what would you change? So, I mean, you, I, I'll just let, let me play devil's advocate for a second. Yeah. You, I'm sure as an independent pharmacy owner, have the ability to sign on with insurance companies to say, yeah, we want to be in network. And, and, and for that, typically what happens in healthcare, right? If you say I'm in network, you agree to predetermined rates. So if, yes. you know, if a doctor's visit is a hundred bucks and you want to be in the network of the insurance company, maybe you say, okay, well, you've got 10,000 people in my County that are in, you know, on your insurance company plan, I'll only charge 80 in exchange yeah. for volume. So they, they say like, I'll provide a discount you know, from off my normal rates, because I, have, I will have access to all 10,000 of your, of your health insurance members. So yes. I'm assuming it's the same or similar way with pharmacies. No, it is the same way with pharmacies. Pretty much. They, they, they set our prices and it's usually numbers and letters that don't make sense. It's average wholesale price and maximum allowable costs and it's not just a flat fee. It's it's you got to find the cheapest medication somewhere in order to even make a small profit on some of these things. They 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 know the the cheapest price of a drug, and they will pay you on that. So you have to go find this you know wherever they're finding this cost at. They don't update their lists like they should. Their their pricing lists. So you know sometimes we're either breaking even on a medication before even labeling it or putting in a bottle. Sometimes we make a quarter. So a lot of times we can't even fill those scripts. It's ridiculous. So you're saying when the insurance company and their, or a pharmacy benefit manager that handles specifically pharmacies, you know, when they, when they offer you a contract to be in network, if I'm reading between the lines, they're just not, they're not paying you enough to, to do business. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. We have to close can- the board. How can you, how can you fill a script for a quarter when you have, you know, payroll and utilities and a bottle and a label and time involved keeping that script for 10 years and, you know, somewhere in case you get audited on it. I mean, there's all kinds of things involved and, you know, we can't do that for a quarter. So how does Walmart do it? Or how does any other big box, not picking on anybody in particular, but how does any, how do they, how do, they, how do the rest of them do it? Well, I mean, some, some drugs you get paid better on, you know, they say that, oh, you got to do more of those. It doesn't make much sense sometimes. How come independent pharmacies don't sign these contracts? Are they not offered the contracts by the big insurance companies or are they offered and the rates that they're offering oh, they're are entirely too oh. low? How does they're that... all offered. Sometimes we just won't sign them because they're horrible. Yeah. You meaning the how much you're getting paid from the insurance hey. company and the yeah. uh, pharmacy benefit manager is too low in order to operate. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we won't even sign those contracts if you know we're, you know, if 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 we're signing them by ourselves. You know, we look at their formulas and it's just like we can't even stay in business with that. So they're going to push them to their own place and say, well, you wouldn't sign the contract. It's like, well, there's no way we can. Just for an example, for an Advair inhaler for uh, COPD or for asthma, uh, brand name was mandated. The insurance company would not, would not let us fill the generic. Copay came back around $400 for a brand name inhaler because it was going towards the deductible. The generic inhaler cost us 65 bucks. We said, hey, you can have this for under $80. Same thing, it won't go towards your deductible because your insurance will not cover this medication. Right. They're only gonna cover the brand. And so the, you know, the guy bought it. You know, we're not making extravagant amounts of money, you know, we're making 12 to 15 bucks, just enough to, for us to keep our doors open. You know, we're not asking for the world. How much more prevalent is uh, mail order going to become in the future? Do you see it increasing or decreasing or staying the same? We hear about <clears throat> companies like Amazon getting in into this. We hear, I mean, Mark you know, Cuban, we, yeah, yeah. He's getting into is this the wave of the future? Are our local independent pharmacies in rural America being phased out, or is there still a role? I think there's still a role. This has been happening for years. You know, people keep saying that you know it's going to go away, but the you know local pharmacies, but I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think people want to come in and, and get it right then. They want to ask questions about it. They don't want to, they don't want to wait. 
They don't want to make it, you know, they don't want the mistakes made. They don't want it out in the freezing cold, you know. But there's people that would love to have it mail ordered and that's their choice. I think choice is the big thing. If you want it that way, that's fine. I get stuff mailed to me and then, you know, if I'm in a coffee club, you get coffee every month. It's kind of nice. That way you don't forget to buy it. But it's not as simple as coffee because it, it's no, it's no, it's not. It's, it's yeah. yeah. Let's say this can keep you alive. That's exactly right. Yeah. But there's also people that because of the price of insulin so high that there's people that don't take as many units as they should just to make it last longer. And some of the generic insulins aren't covered by insurance companies. You know, Lantus has a generic that's a fourth of the price, I believe. It's pretty cheap, but insurance companies won't cover it. But how does that happen? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I, again, I've been in healthcare a long time on the insurance side of things, but I st- that doesn't make yeah. any sense to me, Brian. How can something be a quarter of the price and, and, not, then, be th- and not be covered? They, because they don't get rebates back on it. So why, if they're not going to make money off rebates, why put it on the formulary? Even if it's generic, just like that ad bear inhaler, same thing. What else should I have asked given the, you know our audience uh, that I didn't? Well, well how about this? How do you help mom and dad, if or mom or dad, or a loved one, if they live, you know, two states, three states over, and you're trying to make sure they're not taking, you know, make make sure they're adhering to their medication, or that they're not taking something that's going to get them sick? How do I? How do you do that? Well, I mean, if they live in our town, we can, uh, you know, we can deliver to the patient. We can make sure that they're getting everything filled. We can, uh, you know, if the if if the the mom and dad say it's okay, you know, we can discuss it with the kids and tell them, hey, you know, your mom hasn't gotten her cholesterol medicine in two months. She said she doesn't need it. You know, what do we do? But of course, you know, we have to jump through the hippo hoops and make sure we're not doing anything wrong. You know, as right. long as the as long as the mom and dad say that, hey, that's you know. So how do I do that, Brian? So if I've got my mom, you know, several states away and I'm, you know, she's on 15 meds and I'm worried about her, mm-hmm. do I call her pharmacist or do I call her pharmacy and be like, look, um, I'm trying to make sure she's showing up. It's getting delivered. She's taking them. What should I do as a caregiver to, with the pharmacy or the pharmacist? How does that happen? Well, you can also ask us to do a uh, compliance packaging and, and we can put it all in for morning, noon, evening bedtime doses and they can, you know, it's all right there. You know, we can do that for people. We can, uh, you know, just like they do on some of the, you know, the mail order sites. Uh, what's that packaging place called? Uh, something pack. Anyway. Oh, pill but pack. Pill pack. Yeah. You yeah. know, we can do the stuff just like pill pack, put it in, uh, you know, different times of the days, put all their medicines in one, one thing and they can take it all, make sure they're compliant. We can uh, discuss it with you and, and make sure that, you know, they're taking everything that they should. So if my mom or my dad or my loved one is several states away, mm-hmm. I think what I'm hearing you say is call the pharmacy, call the pharmacist. There's probably some form I got to fill out that says mom or dad says it's okay for me to talk about their health care. Do I have to give you a health care power of attorney or is this just a form? How, do, how does that happen? Uh, they can sign you off on their HIPAA form and, and, and make sure that we can talk to you about it. It'd be fine. All right. So or, that's helpful. Or if you have the power, of, or if you have their power of attorney, we can do that. Too. Oh, all right. So, so it's, I mean, it's, a, good, it's a good often. idea, right? I mean, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm guessing it's probably a pretty oh, no, good it's idea. A very, it's a very good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that uh, your loved ones are being taken care of, you know, find the local pharmacy there that will deliver to your mom and dad that can put it in compliance packaging and make sure that they take it every month. Sounds like pretty solid. Yeah, we can set them up an account. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy. We do it all the time. A lot of people. Don't, we, yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. But we do. We do it every day, so we think they do. You know, so we can we can probably be educated more on it too. You know, make you know, make sure that uh, we're doing everything that we can. Thank you very much for the time, Brian. This has been awesome. Hey, you're welcome. Anything else that I should have asked that I didn't? 
I don't think so. I mean, if I come up with it, we can do another show. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I can't wait. Thanks very much. Have a great day, man. Hey, buddy. Good seeing you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. My thanks to Brian Kiefer for a really interesting peek into the wild and wonderful world of pharmacy and pharmacists. Check out the show notes and websites discussed during the show at themattferretshow.com. And of course, please subscribe to the podcast on your podcast platform of choice. I'd also really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to The Matt Ferret Show YouTube channel, which you can get to through themattferretshow.com or just by searching for The Matt Ferret Show on YouTube. Until next time, to your wealth, wisdom, and wellness, I'm Matt Ferret, and thanks for tuning in. The Matt Ferret Show, related content, publications, and MF Media LLC is in no way associated, endorsed, or authorized by any governmental agency, including the Social Security Administration, the Department of Health and Human Services, or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The Matt Ferret Show is in no way associated with, authorized, approved, endorsed, nor in any way affiliated with any company, trademark names, or other marks mentioned or referenced in or on The Matt Ferret Show. Any such mention is for purpose of reference only. Any advice, generalized statistics, or opinions expressed are strictly those of the host and guests of The Matt Ferret Show. Although every effort has been made to ensure the contents of The Matt Ferret Show and related content are correct and complete, Laws and regulations change quickly and often. The ideas and opinions expressed on The Matt Ferret Show aren't meant to replace the sage advice of healthcare, insurance, financial planning, accounting, or legal professionals. You are responsible for your financial decisions. It is your sole responsibility to independently evaluate the accuracy, correctness, or completeness of the content, services, and products of, and associated with, The Matt Ferret Show, MF Media LLC, and any related content or publications. The thoughts and opinions expressed on The Matt Ferret Show are those of the host and The Matt Ferret Show guests only, and are not the thoughts and opinions of any current or former employer of the host or guests of The Matt Ferret Show, nor is The Matt Ferret Show made by, on behalf of, or endorsed or approved by any current or former employer of the host or guests of The Matt Ferret Show.